Welcome to Hoyt's Bow Hunting Whitetails. We are, what is today? Fourth. January 4th. Thursday. We're going up the valley here just a short ways from the buildings. We've already pulled in here and parked. Uh, we're not gonna get any closer so that the deer don't notice us coming in. You know, the further into the late season you get, just the warier and wilder the deer are. So it's kind of a, you just have to keep being more and more careful with your approaches. I feel like we kind of messed up that spot yesterday, unfortunately. You know, in hindsight, looking at the trail camera pictures that I pulled from those two cameras, there was some daylight activity on that plot. And we went in there with a marginal wind, thinking that the season's winding down, your time to hunt is winding down, you know, let's take a few risks. Well, that doesn't always prove out to be a smart plan, even when the time is coming to an end. Um, I'm not saying that that's the reason that, that, that they didn't come out, because the deer can come from any direction in a spot like that. But I know it didn't help that our scent was coming in from the north, the whole way across the north end of the farm. <laughs> so we'll hopefully uh, maybe get back to that spot again before the season's over, because that did show the most promise. Well, it didn't seem to bother. There were a few deer out when we were leaving. And they would have been, they would have smelled us. No, our... well, yeah, they would have smelled us going in. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it didn't seem like it, they were on too high of alert for yeah. that. And it's hard to say when they came out because they might have come out fairly early too over right. there. But uh, yeah, there was six bucks, I think, six or seven uh, out in that pick cornfield when we were leaving. And we could see them through the binos, but it was way too late to film it. Mm -hmm. um, they might have been heading over to that spot where we were sitting too, where mm -hmm. all that corn was. Because mm -hmm. I had been eating down quite a bit, you said, because you knocked it out mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And there was hardly any left. That's right. Um, so they're definitely active there. Uh, the spot we're going to hasn't been hunted yet. And uh, there's some corn here too that is down that, you know, might be attractive to the deer. There's just so much corn. Mm -hmm. I mean, that this plot, you'll see it when we walk through it. I mean. I have to bring a combine in here. There's no way the deer can eat it all. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you don't do something with it, then it gets replanted in the spring. Mm -hmm. When you plant your next crop, then you got all this volunteer corn that's really hard to deal with. Uh, it's unbelievable that you could have corn in, in a couple of acre plot that the deer don't eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think that's gonna be the case. Uh, but they have been coming out here on camera too, just at night. Uh, so maybe tonight is the night that that changes. Mm -hmm. This is a good spot, you know, I mean, it's an awesome spot. We just need the deer to cooperate a little bit more than they have been. Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails is brought to you by Redneck Blinds, Coat of Silence Apparel, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail, Fuse Accessories, Elevate Tree Stands, B3 Releases and Broadheads, and Hoyt. We have 45 minutes left. I hate to say it. Stop me if you've heard this one before. <laughs> if you know the punchline, 
You we want have, me to just take a crack at it so yeah. you don't have to say it again? See if you can do it, see if you know the line. We haven't seen a whole lot of... No, not a whole lot. I know, I was going to say a whole lot of anything. Oh. We haven't seen anything yet. We haven't seen anything. Um, we will come back and bring you another update. If something does come out in the no. next 45 minutes. We have to say something useful to them, otherwise they're going to cancel their oh. subscription. You're going to have to put that in. Mm. Let me get back to you with something else. Well, I tried. I spent a few minutes pondering in deep thought, and I wasn't able to come up with anything interesting to say to bail us out of this one. We could talk about how much corn is still left. Yeah, I kind of alluded to that in the early interview, but you're right. Here's what I think. The deer will eat some of it this winter if it gets cold. If it gets really cold and it lasts a long time, they might eat most of it. But the biggest issue I'm going to have is what can I plant next year where this volunteer corn uh, doesn't take over. So I think it'll have to be some kind of beans or something that is a, it's a, managed by a different herbicide. You know, interesting problem to have. I never expected this plot to last this long. Well, because you had <clears throat> you had uh, beans in here last year. You did bring up a good point. Was the deer ate those beans? Right. You know, and that might be something that we have to look at for this plot this coming year again. And last year was way colder, and it set mm -hmm. in way earlier. Like it froze the first week of November, didn't it? it snowed at least. Yeah. It did. And uh, there weren't as many acorns. I don't remember there being as many acorns. No. And there was less food because it was mostly pasture up top. Right. Because that cornfield up there got expanded way out too. Yeah, 40 acres added there. So in general, it's just way, way, way more food yeah. than it was last year. Yeah, so maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe the fact that I have too much food this year doesn't mean I'll have too much next year. But... Right, maybe it means we could pull the deer in. Because think about it, say it does get cold, right? Is the only place where there's food left. Yeah. Why wouldn't they come here? Well, they have to know it's here, though. True. It's kind of, this country's so bluffy and steep. Yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't necessarily know. I mean... They can't just put it on Facebook. Oh, well, we could try. I don't know what the deer... I don't know what kind of internet service they get back in yeah, this country. I, I don't get much, so I can't no. imagine they do. So, we tried. We just didn't come up with anything useful. Well... <laughs> I'll give in, because this could be my last hunt of the year. My oh. third and last. Did I'll try to get back up here next week, but... Oh, I had something good to say. I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, oh, to me it's been interesting just to see the... the difference a year can make. And granted, this farm has completely changed from one year to another, but mm -hmm. when you did this in Southern Iowa, I was like six. So I didn't really appreciate it or know what was going on. But just to see how the deer respond to the different inputs, whether it's things that you do differently or just the weather, nature with the acorns, it's been really interesting because I didn't know that at all that they reacted like that. So to me, it'll be cool to see next year too because I don't have as much knowledge to base it off of. I don't have yeah. past experience. So every year that I'm, I do this and you do this, I get to see more if that, if this, then that, like right. you hypothesize and you get to test it and see how it, how it works out, so. Well, and I've done the hypothesizing and the testing. What you're gonna get to see is the, what really happens and it'll be really cool. I think the viewers will get a kick out of it too. You give me three years. Right. And it, it'll be completely different. Right. Yeah. And I've had a few viewers say that it takes five to transform a property and that's about right because we've had it for two. Right. And I can foresee three years from now it being completely different. And there's a lot of projects that go into that. Uh, well, it's, again, it's been cool to be part of that, like yeah. to actually understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, and to get to see it all play out because before I had no idea but what yeah. you're saying. I was gonna say the timber stand improvement will be a massive part mm -hmm. of that. When we change the structure of the habitat on these ridges. Because that's to create more bedding or more forage or both. Well, both, and also to hide us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While we come and go. Because that was an issue that you had this year was the entry and exit, right? Yeah. So 
I mean, I've always said when you make a farm thick, you make it hunt way bigger. Yeah. Because the deer can't see it nearly as far and they can't really hear you as well. Um, so maybe that's the only useful thing that came out of this episode was got us talking about yeah. some of the some of the things that we're seeing. I'm gonna do an episode down the road of the differences between this farm and the one that we owned in Southern Iowa. Mm -hmm. And I think people will be surprised to find out that across Iowa, there's so much difference mm -hmm. in the management practices, not just land management, but the deer management. All right, we need to let you guys get going. Uh, we do have a few minutes left, believe it or not. We haven't talked ourselves to death yet, uh, but I have a bad feeling about these last 40 minutes. Yeah, well, who knows? Yeah, we don't know. We'll check back in in a little bit, but if nothing else comes out, this is where we close. Uh, we appreciate you joining us, and we'll see you right back here again sometime in the next couple of days. Next time. Yeah, <laughs> sometime in the next couple of days for the next episode of Hoyt's Boning White Tales. And remember to always dream big.